Kara ducked to hide again, intending to make a new plan when the fop moved. He went for the sleek runner. Crouched low, he dashed across the empty space between the crates and the anchor the ship was tied to. The guard didn't even stir as the fop started climbing the rope. The Roshbarkers noticed him though and yelled as they spotted him, and she swore. That fop was going to get her killed. She shouldn't have rescued him. He was trouble when she first saw him. Well, she thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. Hara ran and threw a few flashbangs into the crowd. Yelling and smoke engulfed the port as they exploded. Gunshots echoed off the crates, but with the smoke, they were shooting blind. She went by memory into the smoke. She squeezed her eyes shut and wished she had the time to put on her goggles. Hara felt for the rope and cut it with a knife once her fingers found a firm grip. She was yanked off her feet by the buoyancy of the runner. Swinging, she climbed the rope. The fop was more agile than she could have imagined, as he was already pulling himself onto the runner and over the railing. With still a chance, there were people on board. She was cautious. It was rare for a ship to be left in port without even a single sentry, even if they had someone set up on the ground. The fop had no weapon and no chance against a pirate sentry. Hara climbed faster. At the top, she pulled herself on board. She wrangled herself over the railing. She jolted when someone flew past her. The man thunked on the ground below. He groaned and moved, so they weren't high enough to kill anyone by throwing them overboard. The fop dusted off his hands as she finished climbing aboard. She yelled, you could have killed him. The fop glanced over the edge. He lived. Oh, what a pity. She shook her head. The man was crazy. Maybe she should have left him with the Roche Barkers. She heard a commotion further in the airship. Another crewman had discovered the fop. The crewman said, hey, what are you guys, he stepped back when she pulled a gun on him. Unarmed, he quickly surrendered. He put his hands up. Hey, no need to get all violent here. If you want to take the ship, I'm up for it. Hara looked the man over. Covered in soot and grease, he was probably the man who stoked the boiler. Scrawny, he had a bruise half hidden by the soot on his cheek. She narrowed her eyes as she took in his appearance. This man wasn't a pirate. The fop came forward and patted the man on the shoulder. Perfect. We'll need a crew. Hara glared at the fop. How did he think they would work a ship that usually had a dozen men to fly it? The man looked at her and the fop. So, who's in charge? The fop said, don't look at me. She is. I don't do leading. Too much responsibility for me. He wriggled his fingers to indicate he didn't want to get his hands messy. Hara rolled her eyes. The fop passed by the crewman and wandered further into the ship. The crewman watched him go, then looked at her. She put her gun away and the man didn't seem inclined to fight. Hara asked, with a nod to the bruise on his cheek, did they treat you all right? The man shrugged. As good as can be expected. They could have killed me when they took my ship, but they kept me because they were short of a few men and needed someone to stoke the fires. She had heard this story before and it told her what she had suspected, that this was a pirate ship. She said, I'm Hara. What is the name of this ship? The blazing blunderbuss, the man answered. She shook her head at the ridiculous name of the ship. It could be worse, at least the name didn't denigrate women. The crewman followed her as she went further into the ship. He asked, what do you intend to do, captain? Hara glanced at the man. What's your name? I'm Henry, sir. I used to be a cook on an Empire cargo ship. Hara moved rapidly through the ship. Well, Henry, I don't really have any plans. But that crazy fop seems to attract trouble, so I hope we don't end up dead after all this. Henry looked to where the fop had disappeared and asked, 
Who is he? Hara shrugged. No idea, but I think I should find out. She made it to the bridge and turned to Henry. Stoke up the boilers. I think we might need some power, and very soon. Henry disappeared and she turned to the fop, who stared out the window of the bridge. Completely oblivious to the fact he had just stolen a pirate ship. The bridge was decorated with turned wood, polished until it gleamed. Gold leaf was still evident on some decorations, though most had faded. Hara yelled, what the blazes were you thinking? This is a pirate ship. We'll have more than the Roshans on our tails after this. He turned to look at her. I suppose so, but I thought the ship was just going to waste. Ain't she a beauty? The crew obviously didn't appreciate her. Just leaving her there with hardly any crew at all. He smoothed a hand over the polished wood frame around the window. Her name is the blazing blunderbuss, Hara stated. He grinned, flashing white teeth. What an awful name. See, I was right. They don't appreciate her. You'll be a much better captain. Maybe give her a better name. Though I do like that it's an alliteration. What delusions must he have floating in his head to think that she wanted to be captain of a pirate ship? But I'm not a captain. Even as she said this, she could feel an echo inside that whispered that this could be home. A home her father would never find. He blinked gold eyes at her as he asked incredulously, why not? Hara threw her hands up in the air in exasperation. Why was she arguing with a madman, anyway? She ignored him and went to the wheel. With a glance at the charts, she set the wheel and turned back to the fop. He stared at her. See, you are perfect. Hara glanced back at the charts, exasperated. Only a moron wouldn't be able to read charts. He came up to her side. That's true, but these are all in code. A lovely code. Look, it doesn't even use letters. He traced his fingers over the papers. She snorted. A common code, and though lovely, it's simple. It has to be. Pirates aren't the brightest of cookies. Anyone who has spent even a modicum of time on an airship will be able to read these. He looked over the charts again and glanced at the window, ignoring her argument. So where are we going, Captain? Hara growled. I'm not a captain. I'm Hara, I'm just an engineer. He flashed her a grin. A cute engineer. She huffed. Her eyes went to the heavens and asked the gods for patience. This is not the time to flirt. We could have pirates on our tails and rushbarkers wanting to kidnap you again. His eyes sparked. You think I'm flirting with you? Hara narrowed her eyes. This is not the time to have this discussion. He said with a lopsided smile, Gideon. My name is Gideon. Is Hara your full name, or is it a nickname? Hara-ra, Hara-ra. He rolled the, ah, uh, and played with it on his tongue. 